Hi guys, Bice Bump here, bringing you this tips and tricks guide for the Soul Pulsar or the first one for Unholy. You can use this for Frost as well because there are lots of uh, tricks we can use for both specs, but all the cooldown management will be mainly Unholy. The raid has been out for a couple of weeks now. I've been able to uh, get some good passes, some good locks so far. I'm currently ranked 2 overall. Could probably go to rank 1 if I replay the first couple of bosses with the, the tier set. Anyway, I want you guys to. Uh, Get an insight into my cooldown management, as well as what kind of tricks I can use on the bosses to uh, maximize my DPS and so on. When it comes to builds, I recommend running uh, the main, you know, regular talent build on every boss. Uh, you will see me running Clawing Shadows on a couple of bosses here at the start, and that's just because I didn't have a four set when I was running these bosses specifically. When you get the four set, the value of always serve increases so much that you want to pick it up and run it on every single boss. When it comes to Covenants, I will be running Marilef on every single boss. Legendaries would we'll get to that on a boss-by-boss -boss basis. Anyway, let's just start right off with Vigilant Guardian. And this boss on Heroic is such a weird fight because you're going to stand and do nothing for a, large, for a large portion of the fight. Try and use your cooldowns as much as possible. Try and use your death grip to grip in any adds. Try and use your death and decay and do your clone shadows slash uh, skirt strike cleave as much as possible but other than that your dps heavily depends on how much dps your group does if you had a full set make sure you use your soul reaper on ads as much as possible to leverage that harvest time proc on our work though we have instances of you know no ads being there then you just need to sit around and wait for mythic is quite nice you can hit the boss in the meantime i would generally uh run Friends of Monstrosity and boss, this boss because you really don't need Delia's Coil, there's lots of AoE and the burn phase is good to have Friends of Monstrosity there to just maximize your damage. Early on in the fight, you know when the big AoE is coming out, you can use AMZ there to help your raid survive but it really doesn't do that much damage so it's not that crucial really. Once the boss drop down, it's where the fun stuff happens. We will use Bloodlust here as soon as it comes down. That was probably all happened for you as well because he dies very quickly. You want to make sure you have all the cooldowns ready and then just pop your army, use your IQD, your potion, everything, and start using Soul Reaper as soon as the boss hits that 35% health. Once it drops to 15% health, use your AMZ to help your raid soak up the damage. That's it, boss dead. Good luck. On to the next one. Now on to the sausage as I like to call it. On this boss we are generally going to run deadliest coil. What you want to do here is army on pool because you're going to use blood on pool. The main point here is to make sure you leverage your definite K for when the adds comes up. You can see he costs his domination core. You want to use definite K and then spam skirt strike to cleave. You also want to make sure you use your claw your uh, so Reaper on the add to gain the 4 set proc. I don't have the 4 set on this kill which is why I didn't do it. But if you have the 4 set that's going to give you a huge buff at the opener and you're going to deal so much damage. It's pretty insane. Staggering Barrage. You can see that I think I noticed I had the wrong legendary. Anyway, Staggering Barrage, it knocks you back. You can use Death's Advance to uh, dodge that. Easy peasy. Other than that, we just have the ring uh, ability here. You can use AMS to run through the ring without getting a debuff. This is just like a nice thing to have when you do this on Heroic. Whereas on Mythic, it's actually very powerful. Because it allows you to uh, deal that mechanic where other classes need to pick up. Like a blink from a covenant or something else. The adds kind of align with your cooldowns. Like yeah, if you make sure to really use Unholy Blight and Dark Transformation Apocalypse on CD. They will kind of align for every add. It's also great to use Abomination Limb on the adds, so when it comes up, you can hold it for a couple seconds to make sure it aligns with the next ad coming in. That's going to be a big DPS increase. When he jumps over to cast his ability, use AMZ on the raid to help it. It doesn't really matter that much on Heroic, but on Mythic, it's a great help. Other than that, nothing else to add. Boss dies, and let's move to the next one. All right, on to Prototype Pantheon. Uh, for this raid, we can actually use a new legendary 
the Shambler one, it is viable here just because of the insane amount of damage it does in AoE. The stacked kind of scenario is like the perfect case for it. And you can choose to run it if you want to. Other than that, Friends of Monstrosity is also completely viable. We are going to have the Bloodlust in the final phase here. And the boss fight is so short, I won't be able to get two armies. So I'm just going to hold my army for the entire fight. I'm going to try and leverage my Definite K as much as possible. But other than that, there's not too much going on in order to maximize your damage. One point when it comes to talent, so this is before 4 set. I actually running, I'm actually running Infected Claws, and it's completely viable on this kind of stacked target fight. It makes your Definite K windows generally stronger, because you're going to be able to have a higher wound count, which means that when you pop down Definite K, you're actually going to have wounds on your targets to burst, which is a nice DPS upgrade. Once you get the full set though, just run all the serve, it is much better. Anyway, uh, the boss is going to jump down away soon. When the lady jumps up, you can use Death's Advance to negate this knockback, this pushing thing. But other than that, there's not too much you can do to, uh, I don't know, use our toolkit to help. Let's have a look at the, the final phase and the bloodlust. All right, final phase starts. We're going to group up the bosses. I know bloodlust is going to come whenever, the, as soon as they all fall together. So I'm going to prepare for that by using army. And then I'm just going to use blight, transformation, apocalypse into abomination limb. And then definitely K and spot, start spamming scourge strike. With the 4 set, it's going to be crucial that we get that first Soul Reap off as much soon as possible. The boss, bosses are going to go down very quickly, so you can use Soul Reaper when they are like at 40% or something, and it's still going to proc, because they're going to drop to 35% so quickly. Around that, you're probably going to have your target you need to interrupt. Make sure you interrupt that, and just uh, burn the bosses for maximum damage. Alright, that was everything for this boss. Let's move on to the next one. And on to Lehuvim. This specific fight, and I have acquired my four set, and I'm gonna try and leverage that as much as possible on the Adsen mission. You blood some pool, I use all my cooldowns, also get PI, and I'm gonna burst so much here. I recommend, use, recommend using all will serve as always when you have the four set. Before four set, you can definitely run clawing shadows, and that will be pretty good. Um, in the normal phase, what you can do as a DK is use Death's Advance to do avoid the knockback. Other than that, there's not much, too much you can do to optimize the damage. When he uh, spawns his first add, we're going to try and use our Soul Reap on that add to uh, get our uh, full set buff. But it's not going to matter too much because we can't really hit anything. To pass on this boss, you want to focus on uh, padding on the adds, <laughs> to be honest. So what we're going to do is we're going to kill this one. And then we're going to move right next door to use some uh, epidemic on the the small lads. You will see I I will um, you know try and do as much damage as possible there. That dies very quickly. We move next door. These small lads spawn. We are going to pop our cooldowns. You know, uh, kind of paddy, but you know, we kill this boss easily, so might as well. We're going to try and use our uh, soul reaper on those lads. And when we get in the middle, we're going to Soul Reaper these ones as much as possible. So we get as much poss much uptime on the fourth set as we can. So this guy is going to get a Soul Reaper. When he gets when the other guy gets lower, he's also going to get Soul Reapers. And then when the boss gets lower, he's going to also retreat some Soul Reapers. Other than that, there's not much in much elf. You know, we're going to hit another mission. Just going to kill the ads, go in and kill the boss. And that's it. You can see there, I use Soul Reaper on the uh, Guardian here. Uh, just to get some uh, force it off time. I uh, fail a little bit there, uh, tab back and forth, so you saw rip on the boss. That was a mistake. Other than that, there's not much, too much else to it. We're gonna save our abomination limb here for our other set of cooldowns. You know, you could have used it a bit earlier as well, but whatever. That's it. Not much else. Let's have a look at how much DPS we end up at at the end. All right, we're now in the final phase. Everything's in the middle. We're just going to focus the, the boss, pop our second army here, and uh, just use all our cooldowns in conjunction with IQD here to uh, get that big, juicy execute army. And you're going to see we almost end up uh, highest in DPS. And I think this was like rank two when I got it. Anyway, that's the Hubin for you. Uh, when he does his knockback thing, you can use the advance to avoid it. Good, let's move on to the next boss. Alright, let's take a look at Artificer. 
couple of good tips on this boss. First of all, we're gonna use army on pool. I like to pick up uh, Delius Call on this boss, mainly so I get army up back for when you use Bloodlust. Generally on Heroic, you can have Bloodlust at 30%, and if you do lots of damage in your raid, the boss is gonna hit 30% quite quickly, and you need Delius Call to get army back up. Generally, this fight is about leveraging your cooldowns to hit the adds very hard in the intermission phase. And that means you save Abomination Limb for the intermission. And we try and align with other cooldowns in the, in the intermission. It's kind of paddy, but it also helps because the intermission is one point where you can actually wipe. Once you hit the intermission, it's at 75%. We want to use Abomination Limb, pop down our Death and K, and just spam Skirt Strike or Clawing Shadows. As you can see, I'm running Clawing Shadows here. That's just because I don't have a full set yet, similar to the other bosses I talked about. The rings can be dodged with AMS, and it's like a major, major point. When you move through the teleport, your pet will respawn, which means that it gets stunned for 5 seconds. So we really want to avoid that when possible. What we're going to do is whenever there's a ring, we're going to use AMS to dodge that ring, so we don't have to do this whole pet respawn annoyance. Furthermore, when the tank grips, we want to use AMZ on the raid to help uh, mitigate the damage. It doesn't do that much in heroic, but AMS will help make sure that no one dies from it. We kill this so quickly that my abomination limb won't be off for the second set of add, sadly. But you can see I have my other cool lands, so I'm going to be somewhat happy about that. Just an example, we can see the ring coming in. I pop my AMS, walk through, no problem. It's also nice to have MS up for when you get tank pulled, because it mitigates the majority of the damage. We can see the boss reaches 30% health. I almost have army back up. We're going to see uh, Bloodlust coming out soon. And I'm going to pop my army pretty much as soon as possible. And then start leveraging those Soul Reapers. When you have the full set, you can uh, do an absolute ton of damage for this uh, combo. Nothing too much happening after this point, just follow the other tips and the boss will die with you being high up on the DPS meters. Alright, time for Skolex, and this is one of the bosses where we really can't do that much Death Knight specific things. We are gonna army on pool with the Bloodlust. I've been debating for myself, you know, is it better to use army on pool or if you can only get one army to fight, wait for the execute with a four set to get that extra damage. And I come to the conclusion that you want to use army and pool pretty much every time. Uh, what you can do here is use AMS to uh, help deal with the puddles, but you should just dodge those anyway. If you're a bit low on resources, you can always, you know, soak a puddle with AMS to get some runing power. But do be careful so you don't, you're not that one person who tries to cheese mechanics for runing power and then dies because of it, right? Other than that, the one thing we can do is that when the boss burrows, we can use Death's Advance to avoid the knockback, and that gives us a little bit more off time on the boss. Overall, though, this is just a very patchworky encounter where we cannot do much to get more DPS than just do our rotation properly. Dies very quickly on heroic if you do the much short damage. That's it. Let's move on to the next boss. All right, now on to Halondras. Uh, this fight doesn't have too many on all the specific tips, but we can do a couple of things to help uh, maximize our DPS. Um, this fight is a fight where I now have obtained the four set, which is why I picked up Clawing Shadow 
but I didn't pick up Clone Shadows and running all will serve. There is one issue with all will serve on this fight, and that's because the little skeleton dude is terrible at walking over when the boss moves. What you need to make sure is that if he gets caught behind, make sure to resummon him. I have a uh, weak aura that tells me if the little skeleton dude is dead, which he he does die if he ends up uh, very far away from you. And then you just need to resummon him. And you do that by just pressing your normal summon ghoul button. Um, we can use anti-magic shell to help reduce damage when we get the missiles. In the walking phase, we can use death's advance to avoid a knockback. Since we're running Marilith, we can also use uh, Fleshcraft to avoid a knockback. You can see that I pointed out to my little skeleton dude, not running too well. Um, but generally, you just want to use, to use Fleshcraft on CD to have the mastery buff up, so don't save it to avoid a knockback, uh, just because you can, right? When you are soaking the balls and trying to knock them back, it's a good idea to use AMS to uh, stay healthy. You can also use AMS to move through the beams uh, on the boss without taking any damage. Other than that, we just want to use our coolness as soon as possible. If you do these killers very quickly, you want to make sure you save. Uh, we want to make sure your abomination limb aligns properly with your army. I'm running Deadliest Call to make sure my army uh, CD is very low. So that when I use my third abomination limb, I can use that with army. Let's um, jump ahead and have a look at what look, you know, how our execute uh, face looks like. All right, so we made it through boss. I'm now spamming a soul reaper, making sure I have 100% uptime. You can see I have uh, 25 seconds of abomination limb, but the boss only has 20% health. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use army, make sure I get that full duration on it, and then I'm going to use all my other cooldowns and just get a huge amount of burst here at the end. Other than that. Not much else to maximize. This is also a very uh, single target heavy encounter. There we go. Oh god, I'm messing up my cooldowns a bit here. Anyway, final phase, make sure you have army for it. Run the list call to uh, get the proper CDR. And the boss dies. No other tips. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so now we're looking at Anduin, and Anduin is special because we can do a lot here to help both maximize our DPS and make our life better. First of all, I'm running a Mon Frenzy Monstrosity here, and that's because we're using the, the tactic when we use Bloodlust in the first intermission. And then you kind of push the boss so far that you skip the next intermission and kill the boss very quickly. I'm going to save my Abomination Limb on pool. I want to use that when we go into the intermission phase because we can leverage it to... Um, uh, help grip up the ad. That's also why I'm picking up the Death's Reach talent. It helps a lot with uh, gripping the ads. Actually, I can see I, I didn't do that this pull. That's just because I forgot about it. Do pick up Death's Reach. It helps a lot with grouping up the intermission ads. The uh, intermission, or the, the Fallen King intermission, the one where you do tons of damage, comes after three minutes, which means that we can use our IKD on pull and then have it ready for that intermission. We can now see the down phase. I will use Death Grip. After I use Death Grip, I immediately press Abomination Limb and then I use all my other cooldowns and then go into a Death... Maybe I will go into Death and K window. Generally, things die so quickly here that you don't really have time to do anything. I'm going to use Soul Reaper here on the add to get my four set. You can see the debuff is uh, up there just to help with the damage increase. Now let's skip ahead to the uh, Fallen King intermission phase. All right, we're about to hit intermission. Our All our cooldowns are ready. What we're gonna do here is use army, follow up with Blight, Dark Transformation, Apocalypse, our well, Abomination Limb. And then as soon as the small lads come through, we want to make sure that we use Soul Reaper on them to keep up the buff. You can see there, I target it, use Soul Reaper, get the buff. And then I'm going to try and target one more in this phase. That's another one. Refresh the buff. Your army deals an absolute ton of damage in phase. Like if you look at the log after this, I dealt so much more damage than everyone else because there is so much fun going on. Furthermore, you want to spam epidemic, you want to spam epidemic, and you want to just spam epidemic. You get a ton of AoE damage, which boosts your DPS, but it also funnels into the boss because the damage per execute, when there are so many target, is a lot higher with Epidemic compared to Delia's Call. Second group of ads, 
we are going to try and dot them all up and use epidemic as much as possible but we can't do nearly as much damage to them in this instance all right you can see here boss is getting pushed very quickly the rest of the fight is just making sure we saw reaper as much as possible on boss when you add spawn you step in k and clear them as much as possible but other than that that's essentially the fallen king phase that's where you make or break your dps in this case you can see i did a ton of damage which is why i got a very good pass on this boss as well here we can see we are dealing with an ad we are going to puff down definite k i think prioritizing soul reaper and then use some uh, Skirt strikes clean. Also make sure to interrupt the ads with your unusually long uh, interrupt for MLA. Lovely. Let's move on to the next boss. Alright, time for Rigolon. On this boss fight, using the Abomination Limb is dangerous. That's why we're going to use Army and then Ab Abomination Limb instantly on the opener. I'm running uh, Friends in Monstrosity here. Uh, I probably should have run Daily's Call looking back at it. You see those first quasar spawning? You need to make sure you have a cancel or a macro so that you can sell your abomination limb. Otherwise, you're going to grip them in and you're going to ruin the raid for everyone. Your main focus on this fight is going to be to leverage your soul reaper to keep up your buff. When I look back in the logs, I'm managing a 70% uptime on that 50% pet damage increase buff. That's what you're aiming for. So whenever there's quasars, you should make sure that you have uptime on your buff. You can see me there. I'm always looking at the quasars, making sure that I know when's the next one coming, which one can I Soul Reaper. Boom, get the buff. When we go into the intermission, he's gonna push us back, use Death for Dance to avoid that. You can see me in Death for Dance, and then I pick one of the, there we go. Intermission phase, we're going to use AMZ on our raid to make to help mitigate the damage that the balls do. We're also going to make sure we use Soul Reaper on the balls appropriately to gain the buff. We don't actually need to damage them, they kill themselves, but we want to make sure we um, you know, get the extra buff from them. Other than that, same thing in the next phase, we're just going to use Soul Reaper on the ads, make sure we use our uh, cooldowns as soon as they come up. Abomination Limb, the next time we use that, is going to be in the next intermission phase. We never want to use it other than on pool or in the intermission phases. All right. We're going to try and combine our next army with that as well. And I think if I actually properly run Deadliest Call in this file, fight, uh, I, would have, I would have had army up properly for the, uh, the next Abomination Limb. But, you know, a mistake. I still got rank on this boss, rank one on this boss, so that's nice. But I'm also getting PI, so it's helping a little bit. Anyway, uh, no other tips on that boss. Soul, Re uh, Soul Reaper usage is everything. If you don't want to run a, uh, if you don't want to run Necrolord, you can run uh, Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver with Corain. You get that first strike buff so much by hitting the the quasars when they spawn. It's like 25% crit throughout the fight. So it's definitely a viable alternative. If you don't want to deal with these cancel or macros and not having, not being allowed to use abomination limb. All right, cool. Let's move on to Lords of Dread. All right, so Lords of Dread fight. This is all about maximizing your damage for the the swarm damage windows. Therefore, we're running monstrosity, uh, friends of monstrosity. Make sure we get that extra AOE damage, and we don't really need the uh, cooldown reduction on army. We're going to use everything on pool except Abomination Limb and Army. The Swarm Phase comes after roughly 45 seconds, so it aligns quite nicely. We're going to try and uh, leverage our Definite K as much as possible on this fight. Make sure we uh, do get the cleave we can. Furthermore, we are making sure we pick up Death's Reach, you know, the extra range on... Um, what's it called? Death Grip. As soon as the ad reaches 100, health we're going to grip that in and make sure we leverage soul reaper on it to get some extra up time this is especially good for the first swarm phase the ad is going to grip, get gripped in and then this first swarm phase is going to happen and we're going to able to uh soul reaper the ad to get that buff with army with bloodlust with the swarm to just deal an absolute insane amount of damage you can see here army is up 
I'm popping everything. I'm going to pop down Definite K. I'm just going to spam Skirt Strike. And you can see I'm just going to hit a ton of damage. They changed it recently, if you guys saw it. They now take 100% damage from all sources. It's not just AoE, which is why it's so important to make sure we use army when they get the swarm. Other than that, there's not that much tips. You know, make sure you use Def, Def and Decay on cooldown. Use your other CDs on cooldown as well. That will ensure they align well with the uh, damage phases. So if you make sure you use Blight, DT and Apocalypse every 45 seconds, they're going to naturally align. Furthermore, keep grouping in the ad and use Soul Reaper to gain the buff as much as possible. Other than that, nothing else much to add. Make sure to save your Abomination Limb for uh, all the Swarm Faces. They're a little bit more than two minutes apart. So just hold it for a couple seconds. Cool. Now on to the final boss, which is uh, the Jailer. Let's take a look. Okay, final boss, the Jailer. On this fight, we're going to run Deadliest Call, but Fronts Monstrosity is also very much viable. And I think actually better. Might swap to it. No, never mind. We're going to blood us on pool. I recommend you to do so as well. Makes the fight generally easier because you're going to push it at a lower health percentage. I am. Um, I do have the uh, faucet here. I'm going to try and leverage that as much as possible when I can in the fight, which is unfortunately just right at the end, but still going to focus on that a lot. We In the first phase, we can really only use our cooldowns as soon as they come up, as well as using our Death's Advance when the boss does his pull towards him. It's a generally good idea to save AMS if you get the, the runes you have to jump into a hole because that deals a lot of damage and you risk dying from it. Other than that, not too much to focus on here. One thing, we can actually uh, hold our abomination limb for our other cooldowns. In the final phase, we're going to have these adds spawning, right? And we're going to want to use abomination limb to grip them all together. That means we're going to hold abomination limb for some period of time. And that means that it's not as important to use it as much as possible because we're going to have to hold it anyway. So hold up formation limb for your Blight DT combo uh, in the first phase. All right, so in the second phase, we want to help the group CC the players that get MC'd. And what we use here is grip of the damn, I think, the talent that makes definitely case slow a lot. As soon as people get MC'd, we're going to pop down Definite K, and that's going to help a lot, both to slow them, but also help us cleave on them with uh, Definite K. If you do get MC'd, do not pop AMS like I do here, because people won't be able to stun you with the magic stuff. Um, that is mistaken, I nearly die for it. And we're having a bit of fun here, that I nearly made it through the edge. Uh, anyway, don't pop AMS when you get MC'd, okay? You will probably die. Other than that, you can use Death's Advance to avoid the knockbacks. You can use your uh, Fleshcraft and Marilef to avoid the knockbacks. You try to be mindful of everything going on so you don't accidentally get knocked in the wrong direction. I think in this fight I nearly died because I wasn't paying enough attention. Okay. Oh well. Anyway, let's take a look at the, the final phase. All right, we're now in the final phase. Here you're going to want to use Soul Reaper on CD as much as possible. We want to keep up our faucet buff and we want to make sure we damage the boss as much as possible. Uh, we can see here that I kind of messed up my abomination limb usage. We see some ad spawning. I don't have abomination limb, but I just communicate with our, my blood DK buddy so that he grips the adds. When the ad spawn, we're going to want to use uh, definite K to do as much cleave as possible, but he's going to die very quickly. Instead, we'll be focusing on the next set. You can see here I have army ready. I use it on pool and then I kind of hold it throughout the fight because I want to use it exactly when it's needed in the final phase. Abom army with our Soul Reaper with Abomination Limb is going to burst so much and you're going to see me just popping off on the meters in the next set of apps. Let's just um, uh, fast forward until that point and you guys are going to see it. All right. Next set of ads coming, I know it, so I pop my army. I use all my CDs, I use IQD, Dark Transformation, I use my Abomination Limb, and this point I am blasting so much. You can see that I started at like 12k, and I'm going to end up at like 14, 15k. 
just from this huge burst of damage. I also get PI. It's so much burst. Cool. That was everything for uh, the Jailer. The tips to uh, deal as much damage. It's all about uh, maximizing that. Uh, Abolition Shalim in the final phase, using your armies properly, and so on. Cool. That was all the bosses. I hope you guys found that useful. I hope I didn't ramble too much. And it's going to help you pass better on all the fights. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a comment down below. Up for down vote. Consider subscribing. Hit me up on Nacros Discord if you have any questions. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much.